Hello class, welcome to another video on the calculus series. So we're still in calculus one, we're looking at lesson 12, implicit differentiation. So uh, up until now we've done what is called explicit differentiation. Uh, we're going to talk about the difference between explicit and implicit. So um, there's implicit and explicit functions. So most of the time functions are expressed in what is called the explicit form. So here are a few examples of how that looks like. So for example, y equals 3x squared minus 5. Notice that the function is explicitly in terms uh, of x on one side. So basically you have one, a y on one side and then it's separated from x on the other side. So essentially you just have one function uh, written in terms of another, right? Uh, instead of having them all mixed into one side, all right? And then second e uh, equation or function, we have y equals x plus eight. And then the third function, f of x equals e to the x squared minus one. Remember f of x is sort of like y, but you notice that all the x stuff is on one side and then it's expressed all in terms of just x. All right, so um, here are some examples of implicit form. So if it's defined implicitly, that means you're not explicitly solving for one of the variables, in this case, y. So here's an example, x, y is equal to one. So here, notice that y is not explicitly solved for. If you were to solve for y here in the equation x, y equals one, well, all you have to do is divide both sides by x, right? Uh, so in other words, y equals 1 over x. And now it's explicitly solved for, right? You can see that. Um, that's explicit form. Now implicit form is xy equals 1. All right. Um, and then similarly for the other one, we have x squared minus 5 equal um, this here. This, is, this needs to be on the other side for us to be able to uh, solve it, right? Explicitly. Uh, the third one, x squared minus 2y cubed plus 4y equals 2. Some forms are very hard to solve for y by itself. And so sometimes we like to put it in the implicit form because it's kind of hard to solve. So in this equation, it's going to be pretty difficult to solve for y and get y completely by itself and then have nothing but constants and x's on the other side. So uh, sometimes the implicit form, uh, we leave it in that form just to uh, simplify things. So that's implicit versus um, explicit. Now, most derivatives are taken in the explicit form. So if you want to take it in the implicit form, this is known as implicit differentiation. So we're going to show you how to do that. And it involves using the chain rule, okay, which is the, um, you know, one of the previous lessons. So when you differentiate uh, terms involving y, you must apply the chain rule. All right, so we'll talk about what the chain rule is. I, I can, put, I can uh, briefly mention it here. Um, so, for example, if you have a function um, such as, uh, you have a function in term that is in terms of x. So, for example, you have the function square root of x squared minus 1. And you want to differentiate that, right? You want to differentiate that with respect to x. So, let's say you want to take the derivative of that. Well, um, since this is a complicated form on the inside here, uh, we usually replace it with, for example, u, and we say that u is equal to x squared minus 1. And you can take the derivative of x squared minus 1, that's not a problem, and you can also take the derivative of square root of u, that's not a problem. So if, if I wanted to take the derivative of this, then it would be, um, so in order to get dy dx, right, if I, in order to differentiate this with respect to x, I would have to write it in terms of u, and I'd take the derivative of that. So I'd take the derivative of y with respect to u, and this is u. But then I had to take, um, um, this is u. So I'd have to take the derivative of this with respect to u. But we know that the derivative of that is 1 over 2 square root of u. And that's using the power rule, okay? And then we take the derivative of u with respect to x, which is this term here. So what's the derivative of that with respect to x? What's well, going to be 2x, right? The derivative of x squared minus 1 is 2x. So in this case, dy du is 1 over 2 square root of u. And then we can replace, let me just leave it like that. And then du dx is 2x. And then of course we would have to replace u with um, x squared minus one, right? So I'm gonna do that now, uh, x squared minus one. So uh, this is how you use the chain rule. So this is the basic form of the chain rule right here, okay? We talked about it previously, but I just wanted to mention it again. 
Uh, so if you're um, struggling with chain rule, just go back to the previous lesson and take a look at that. But we're going to be using the basic form of it. So example one, find the derivative of each of the following functions with respect to x. So if I look at the first function, it's it, it's um, it's in, it's explicit differentiation, right? Because it's only in terms of x. So we're okay here. If it was in terms of y, then it would be implicit differentiation, right? So um, so just kind of give you an idea. So here the the uh, the function is uh, y equal to x cubed, and we're taking we're we're basically doing just dy dx, right? Which is the derivative of x cubed. So that's where that comes from. So that's where we're doing the derivative of x cubed. But the derivative of x cubed, we know it's a power rule, right? So it's going to be three x squared. All right. So we know it's a basic power rule. So we'll go ahead and uh, put that in the slide. So we got the derivative, it's just basic power rule. So this is explicit, right? So this is explicit differentiation. All right, now the, the next one is uh, implicit. It involves the chain rule. So we need to take the derivative of with respect to x, right? The, this is telling you what you're differentiating with respect to, but the function itself is 2y cubed. Right, so it's not a function. I mean, it, it's not a necessarily a function of x. It's just a function of difference. So you have to use it. And y might be a function. My y itself is a function of x. Right, it might be a function of x. Um, however, um, notice that there are no explicit x's in there. Right, it's just implicit. Um, so to take the derivative of that, we need to use a chain rule. So we're we're going to take the derivative. So in other words, take um, take this and turn turn it. We're going to take the derivative of this with respect to y, and then we're going to take the derivative of y with respect to x. So this is the chain rule. Okay, chain rule. All right. Um, so normally in the chain rule, we would replace this with u, and we would say du dy or i'm sorry we would say uh dy du and then du dx right that's that's another way that we would write in terms of the chain rule but here we're doing it in terms of y instead of u so just we're taking the derivative with respect to y and then times dy dx now the derivative of this uh function here right that's easy that's a power rule so we're gonna, we're gonna differentiate that this is just a power rule six y squared. So that's the derivative of that with respect to y, right? But then, of course, because we have to include the chain rule, because we're not differentiating with respect to y, we're differentiating originally with respect to x. So we have to make sure that we keep the, uh, that intact. So we got the dy dx right there. Okay. So if you're taking the derivative of something with respect to a different variable, you're going to need to use a chain rule, all right? So in other words, so uh, the next part, this is uh, so this is in, uh, implicit, right? Uh, implicit. So we need the chain rule. Um, this is implicit as well, and so we need the chain rule. Now we don't need the chain rule for the entirety of it. We only need the chain rule for the y part, right? So we need the chain rule for this part. Uh, when we take the derivative of 5x, that's explicit, right? So the derivative of 5x doesn't really do any. It's just going to be the derivative of 5x, which is just 5. Okay. Now, when we take the derivative of the 6y squared part, that's where we need to do the chain rule, right? So again, taking the derivative of something with respect to a different variable necessitates the chain rule. Um, so now we got the derivative of this is 5 which we got here, and then the derivative of this using the power rule with respect to y is 12y, and then of course include that dy dx, okay? All right, so here, this is um, implicit as um, again. However, we need to use the product rule. We need to use the product rule here because we have a product of two different variables or two variables, right? If we have a product of any two variables, <laughs> or any two functions, right? Uh, if any two functions, then we have to um, make sure that we use the product rule. So remember, the product rule is, so let me just show you the product rule here, with f times g. It's uh, f prime g plus g f prime, okay? So we need to take the derivative of the x squared part first, which we do here, times the second part, the g part, which is the y to the fifth, 
Okay, so this is sort of like my f prime, my g, and then this is my g. Um, actually, will be yeah. So this is let me just write out here f prime g, and then this is my f g prime. Okay, same thing. Um, I should have actually I should have written it as f g prime. I'm sorry, that was a miss. Um, written chain uh, miswritten product rule that's the product rule f prime g and f g prime you alternate the derivatives um so now we got their f which is x squared and now g when we take the derivative of g we need to use the chain rule right because g we're it's a function of y right g is a function of y okay so we have to make sure we use a chain rule uh, I want to clarify something else too. So if we have, if our function is f of y and it's equal to y to the fifth and we're differentiating it with respect to y, I know this sounds weird, but if we're taking the derivative of this function with respect to y, right? Um, so the d, let's call it df, df dy. So in other words, we're taking the derivative of this with respect to y well do we need a chain rule here well the answer is no we don't need a chain rule here because we're differentiating this with respect to its variable so this is just going to be 5y to the fourth right um, so remember the 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 reason why you need the chain rule earlier is because you're differentiating this with respect to x now if you're differentiating this with respect to y it doesn't change anything because we already have our function in terms of y now if i took the derivative of this with respect to x that changes things right uh, so let's let's just quickly show you that so if i change this to an x now well now this changes things uh, because now i'm taking the derivative with respect to x of y to the fifth but this is not a function of x not directly it's implicitly a function of x right um, so uh, in that case, we're going to need to take the derivative with respect to y times dy dx. And then notice that these kind of sort of, they kind of sort of cancel out, giving you the d dx, which is what we wanted, right? The d dx here. Um, so that's why you need the chain rule so that you can kind of chain these derivatives together to get the original derivative that you want. Okay, so just make sure that you understand that concept of the chain rule, and then you you'll, you you won't go wrong. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and finish the rest of the uh, exercise. So here, if I um, show you the rest of the um, solution here, the derivative of x squared is just two uh, x. So we got the two x here, and then we got y to the fifth. So this is my f prime g. Now this is my g, and then this here is my f prime, right? my f prime and that was using the chain rule if you recall all right and then um yeah the derivative of y to the fifth is 5y to the fourth and then we just multiply these two together to get that all right so that's the derivative okay so example two um, now we got an equation that is in the implicit form right it's not in terms of x on one side and then y just y on the left side um, when I mean y, I mean literally just y. Like, for example, y equals blank blank in terms of x, right? <laughs> Everything in terms of x, you know, whatever. You know, I'm just giving you an example. But you have to have y, just literally just y, equals and then something in terms of x. Um, all right, so, so um, there you go. So here we go. So we're going to take the derivative of this. Now we're going to take the derivative of both sides of the equation. Remember that the derivative is an operation so it behaves the same way as any operation as far as if you do it on one side you got to do it on the other side right is that whole thing right so this is an equation if you do an operation on one side you have to balance it by doing it on the other side so it works the same way as like for example any other operation that you would do so we're taking the derivative with respect to x on the left side and on the right side now the derivative with respect to x of a constant remember is zero so this is going to be zero now, when we, when we do the derivative of y cubed, this is going to be a chain rule. This is going to be a chain rule. This is going to be a chain rule. And then this is not a chain rule, right? This is not a chain rule because it's directly related to x. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So um, we're going to take the derivative of y cubed with respect to y and then chain rule dy dx, right? Chain rule. 
and then chain rule here. The derivative, just like you normally would, but then dy dx. The derivative, like you normally would, but then dy dx. This one's not a chain rule, so not a chain rule, right? Just a regular derivative. And then, of course, this is not a chain rule. This is a regular derivative. Okay, um, so hopefully that makes sense. All right, so now the derivative of y cubed is 3y squared, but then dy dx. The derivative of y squared is 2y using the power rule. The derivative of 5y is 5. A negative 5y, which is just negative 5. The derivative of negative 3x squared using the power rule is negative 6x. Okay, again, review the power rule if you need a refresher on the power rule. Okay, and I'll, I'll put the, the formula for the power rule just so that you have it. Um, right here, it's nx to the n minus 1. Okay, um, all right, so there's your um, derivative on both sides, and now we're going to solve for dy dx. So we're going to take this dy dx and we're going to pull it out because they have it in common. But we also we're going to move the 6x over here as well. So move the 6x over there and then we'll be able to pull out the dy dx. OK, so uh, pull out the dy dx, factor it out and then move this to the right side. OK, there we go. Um, now we're going to divide this on both sides. We're going to we're going to move this to the other side by dividing it. So we're going to divide both sides by 3y squared plus 2x minus 5. Okay, and we're just solving for the dy dx. So this is my solution. We're solving for the, the, the first derivative, okay? All right, so there you go. So notice that this um, solution here is in terms, um, is explicitly in terms, well, it's just dy dx on one side, but notice that on the right side, you have it in terms of y and x. So this is still uh, an implicit are, it's just a mixed form, right? So it's not nece necessarily in terms of just x, right? We have x's and y's here. Now, can you put it in terms of just x's? Yes, but it's a lot of work. So I wouldn't suggest doing that. I would suggest just leaving it in that form. But um, that's okay. It's okay to have it in terms of x and y there. All right, so example three. If possible, represent y explicitly as a differentiable function of x. So again, we're going to we're going to try to um, re, um, re, you know, rewrite y explicitly here because right now these are three implicit forms. So let's see if we can write it explicitly. Um, we're not even taking derivatives or anything like that. We're just trying to write out the explicit form if, if possible. Now, if you um, know your, uh, your pre-calculus, um, you would know that the equation of a circle of a circle at the origin is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. This is a circle that is located at the origin uh, where the center is at the origin and the radius is r. Okay. So um, this is what these various these two forms represent. Okay. We'll talk about the third form in a second. Um, so if you look at here, the radius here is zero. And here, the radius here is 4. So for part A, it represents literally just a dot at 0. So it's just a dot at 0. There's no radius whatsoever. So it's not a circle. It's just a dot in space. So it's a circle of radius 0, which, you know, it's not really a circle. But if you think about it as a circle of radius 0. Um, in other words, y can't be expressed explicitly as a differentiable function of x because it's just a point in space. So you can't really do anything with this, right? You can't. If you try to do it, if you try to solve this, let me, sh let me just show you this. If you try to solve this, well, you're going to have to subtract x squared on both sides first off, right? So you get y squared equals negative x squared. Now, if you take the square root, um, notice that you have to take the positive and negative square root. Whenever you take the square root, you have to do the positive version and the negative verse, the negative square root. Uh, why do you have to do that? Well, remember that if you have y squared equals 25, there's two solutions. There's the square root of 25, and then there's the negative square root of 25, right? It could be 5 or negative 5. In other words, you have to make sure you include both solutions, the plus or minus version. Um, but that's besides, so that's just an aside. Now, the the problem here is that you cannot take the square root of negative x squared, right? You can only take the square root of negative x squared when x is equal to 0, right? But if x is equal to any other number, you're going to get an imaginary solution here, 
an imaginary solution. So you're going to get a complex number. So in the real numbers, there is no solution here. Okay. So you cannot express it as a function, as a differentiable function. Okay. So that's the issue here. Um, all right. So hopefully that made sense. So you cannot. This, that's why. Now the second one, you can actually express it as a function, but you'd have to split it as a piecewise function. You'd have to split it into two pieces. We'll show you that in a second. So this is a, a circle of radius four, right? Because this is equal to r squared, right? According to this, r squared is 16. So then the square root of 16 is four. So it's a circle with a radius of four centered at the origin. Now that you can express as two different functions, right? So we can um, we can solve, we can move the x squared to both sides by subtracting it on both sides. Uh, and so we get y squared equals 16 minus x squared, and then we could take the square root. But remember, we need to take the positive and negative square root. So this is the positive version, and then this is the negative version, right? You can see that there. So um, now the positive version is a an upper semicircle. So it's it's this part right here with a radius of four. And then the negative version is a lower semicircle. So that's this the, the other part right here. So if you take it as two separate functions, then you can write it as two differentiable functions, right? Two separate differentiable functions. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at the, the one on the right. Now the one on the right is a parabola, okay? So it's a parabola that is on its uh, side, okay? So it, it, it's a parabola that's on its side. So it's facing sideways. Um, so in other words, it's um, right here. So when x is three, when x is nine, I'm sorry, when x is nine, then the value is zero and then it goes like this okay so there's my sideways parabola so that's this guy right here so if i subtract x on both sides i get y equals nine minus x and then i got to take the square root right so i got to take the positive and a negative square root and that's where i get this function now so the 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 square root of nine minus x is the upper part of the parabola right which is from negative infinity to nine and then the, the negative one is just a bottom version of that, right? From negative infinity to x equals 9. So that's the bottom part of the parabola. So you can express it as two differentiable functions as long as you split it into two parts. It, uh, this as a whole is not, it's not a function, right? Uh, because remember, the definition of a, uh, of a function is that it has to pass the vertical line test, right? So you might remember that from algebra. This fails the vertical line test, so this is not a function. However, if you express it into two different parts, then each part individually represents a function. And then, you know, you can, of course, you know, differentiate it and all that, but, uh, but just letting you know that you can, you can express it as a function as long as you split it into two parts, right, and, and not put them together. Um, so, yeah. So that's um, writing something explicitly. Now let's look at example four. Let's determine the slope of the graph of the given function at 3, 1. Now this given function, of course, is implicit, right? So this is an implicit form. Um, solving this for y, you know, it's going to take some, you know, it doesn't take that much work, but I mean, it's, it's, it'll be a little bit more complex. So we're going to try to take the derivative. Um, the slope means derivative, right? So let's let's figure out what uh, how to find this. So let's take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. Um, remember, if, since it's an equation, if I do it on one side, I must do it on the other side. Okay, so um, that's what we do here. Now, um, this is going to involve a product rule. If you notice here, this is a product rule. Um, product rule slash chain rule and then of course this is going to involve a uh, chain rule right so let's go ahead and do that so let's take the derivative so um, using the power rule the two goes down and then we got x squared plus y squared and then we got to the one power because two minus one is one now this is a chain rule because this is a complex function so we got to take the derivative of the inside now the der derivative of the inside uh, the derivative of x squared is just 2x this is just a uh, this is not this is not a chain rule this is just a uh, power rule 
Now, the derivative of y squared, that's a chain rule, right? So it's a chain rule within a chain rule, okay? So it's a chain rule slash chain rule. It's a chain rule within a train chain rule. Um, but yeah, so the derivative of this, this turns into 2x, and then the derivative of y squared is 2y, but then include the dy dx. And then on the right side, we got the um, product rule. Remember, the product rule is f prime g plus f g prime, okay? So that's what we have here. So the derivative of f prime is 100. The derivative of 100x is 100. Um, so there should not be an x there. Or I'm sorry, no. In, in the next step, there will be 100. And then this is f, and then this is g, and then this is the derivative of g. The derivative of g is just a dy dx, okay? All right. Um, so then we're just kind of cleaning things up a little bit. Like we said, the derivative of x squared is 2x, which we wrote here. The derivative of y squared is 2y. The derivative of 100x is 100. And then we have the y here. Uh, and then we have 100x and then dy dx. So that's everything. So now next we're going to do is we're going to solve for dy dx. Uh, so we're going to do that. So first, we're going to need to distribute this here and here. So that's what we do in this next step. We distribute. So we got the 6 times 2x is 12x. Um, and then we got the 6 times 2y is 12y. So that's how we get that. And we're, gonna, we're trying to get the dy dx's by itself. So that's our goal. Okay, so we're going to move things around. We're going to move some furniture is what I call it. So we're gonna move this dx dy over here to the left side, and then we're gonna move this over to the right side. That's what we do in the step below it, okay? And then we're gonna isolate this. We're gonna pull this out. So that's what we're gonna do. So that's what we do over here, and then we're gonna divide this off on both sides. So divide and divide. Okay, that way we can get dy dx by itself. So we're gonna divide that on both sides, and then this is what we get. So we get the numerator divided by this big denominator. And I just move this, I just switch these. So the 100x, I put that up front, and then the 12y, I put it towards the back. So I just you know moved it a little bit, rearranged it on the bottom. No worry about that too much. Um, and then notice that these all div are divisible by four. So I divided this by four, divide this by four, divide this by four, divide this by four. And so that's how we get the 25 and the three. And that's really it, that's my derivative. And then uh, we're gonna need to find, uh, you know, plug in our coordinates. So we know x is equal to three and y is equal to one. So we're gonna plug that into there. So the derivative at, so this is the derivative at uh, xy, right? The derivative at xy, which is three, one. Uh, we're going to plug those in. So at y is 1, right? And then x is now 3. And do the math, and you get 13 over 9. We reduced the fraction, of course. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, finding the slope. I mean, do, implicit differentiation can get messy sometimes, but then at the end, when you plug in the numbers, you know, it, it's a, it involves a lot of arithmetic. But once you do that, it's not so bad. You get one number at the end. Uh, but yeah, getting to that number can be uh, a bit of pain. But you, you've noticed by now, in calculus, things can get messy pretty quickly, right? Just because there's a lot of things going on. All right, so here we go. Example five. Determine the equation of the tangent line to the graph of x squared plus 4y squared equals 4 at the given point square root of 2, negative 1 over square root of 2. All right, so we got to differentiate this uh, implicitly to find the, the slope. Let's, let's recall the equation of the, uh, well, re remember the equation of the tangent line. y minus y1 equals m, m, right? m is the slope, but we usually use that as a derivative. So f prime times x minus x1. So that's the equation of the tangent line, right? And so we need the derivative, which is the dy dx. That's what we're going to do right now. We're going to do the dy dx. So let's try to find the derivative. Um, this is your x1, this is your y1, and we're going to try to find out the derivative at x1. So let's take the derivative uh, of with, with respect to x on both sides of the equation. This is going to be 0 because the derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of x squared is 2x. Uh, the derivative of, of 4y squared is 8y dy dx. Remember, you need to use a chain rule for that, okay? So it's 8y uh, dy dx, all right, chain rule. 
Okay, so this is just showing you the chain rule that I'm about to do over here, this chain rule that I just did. Um, okay, and then this is zero. All right, so we got that. Now we're gonna move the 2x here and then divide by 8y. Okay, so then divide by 8y on both sides. Oops, sorry, pen's acting up here. So we gotta divide by 8y, there you go. And then get dy dx. All right, and then um, of course we gotta reduce the fraction. So we're gonna divide by two here and here. So we get negative x over four y. All right, there's my, there's my dy dx. Then we need to plug in um, x and square root of two into that. Uh, and then negative one over square root of two. So we're gonna plug this in, right, into that derivative, which is what, what this shows. Okay, so x is square root of two, and then y is negative one over square root of two. So you can see that as I'm plugging it in. All right, so now I th remember that, let me just show you the work here, just so you can kind of see that. Um, this turns into negative four over square root of two. And then remember, you have to do the reciprocal of this. So that's gonna be the square root of two over four, and then multiply, okay? So when you divide a, a number with a, a, a whole number with a fraction, you need to flip the fraction, right? So you're gonna do the reciprocal and then multiply. And then square root of two times square root of two is just two. So that's how we get the two there. And then this negatives cancel out. Become give, This gives you a positive quantity. So that's how I got a positive number. And we got four on the bottom. So we get two fourths. This is how I got the two fourths here, which reduces to one half. So hopefully that made sense. Sorry if I'm, if it seems like I'm going a little too fast on that, but I just wanted to make sure I clarified the steps in between. Um, all right, so that's how I got one half. And then, um, then this is the equation of the tangent line that I wrote earlier, uh, dy dx. And then we're gonna just plug in what we know. We know the derivative is this now. Oops, uh, let me, well, so we know the derivative is this. We plug that in there. And then we know x1 and we know y1. This turns into a positive. And then we're going to, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna rewrite uh, this one over square root of two right here. And I'm gonna rationalize the, the new denominator. I'm gonna rationalize the denominator, multiply both sides by the top and bottom by square root of two or square root of two. And then I gotta distribute this, okay? So when I rationalize this, I get this. And the reason why I do that is because now these are in the same form, you can see that there. So I'm gonna subtract a square root of two over two on both sides. And when I do that, I get negative two over two square root of two over two, and then these cancel out, leaving me with square root of two, negative square root of two. All right, that's the equation on my tangent line. All right, so that's example five. Here we go, example six. Find dy dx implicitly for the equation sine y equals x, then find the largest interval uh, on which y is differentiable. All right, so we're gonna look for a differentiable and then we're gonna to try to find dy dx implicitly. All right, so let's take the derivative on both sides. This is an implicit form, this is implicit. So we need to find the, the implicit differentiation. Let's take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. The derivative of x with respect to x is just one. Um, if you think about it, that makes sense, right? Because d, let me just kind of show you. Uh, that makes perfect sense because the dx dx, right? Well, this is just dx over dx. If you think about it, dx divided by dx is one, right? If you think about it, it makes perfect sense. When you think of it, when you think of the derivative as just a fraction, it just makes perfect sense. dx divided by dx is just one. Um, you know, we know, of course, using the power rule, you get the same thing. But either way, you get one on the right side. On the left side, the derivative uh, of sine y is cosine y, but then you have to use the chain rule, right? So then you have to be cosine y, dy dx. I'm sorry about this uh, mess here. All right, so we got dy dx, um, so we got the derivative of sine y is cosine y, and dy dx equals one. And then we'll divide both sides by cosine y, so we get the derivative. dy dx is one over cosine y. Now we wanna do this in terms of x. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rewrite cosine y in terms of x, okay? So let's do that. Remember that sine y is equal to x is the same thing as y equals sine inverse of x. Okay, because remember, sine y equals x. How do you solve for y? Well, you gotta take the inverse sine. Uh, on both sides, 
okay? So you get y equals inverse sine of x, all, otherwise known as arc sine. So this is the same thing as arc sine of x, right? You might have known it, known it as arc sine, but it's the same thing. All right, so, but, all right, so that, that's that's how we got this, this y equals sine inverse. All right, um, now, if you remember from your pre-calculus, now I don't have this in the pre-calculus lesson, I'm still working on the pre-calculus series. Uh, but, you know, if you go to any video and you, and you study, uh, you know, inverse trigonometric functions on a trigonometry course or pre-calculus course, you know that the the range of sine inverse is negative pi over two pi over two. I'm gonna show you this on the graph. Okay, so here's the graph. This is the graph of of sine y equals x. Okay, so this is sine of y equals x. So if you graph it, you get this wave. Remember that sine of x goes like this. That's sine of x, right? Okay, so it's just sort of like it's just the same graph but sideways, right? because uh, you're switching y and x. So now if you want to do a sine of inverse, the only remember that this fails a vertical line test, right? Because you know it's right now it's it's going through the vertical line at multiple points. So in order to turn it into a function, we need to use this blue part. Okay, so this blue part turns it into a function so it becomes it passes the vertical line test. Now this is the function sine of inverse, sine inverse of x, arc sine of x. Okay, so if we just ignore the uh, the red part and we just focus on the blue part, then that's my inverse sine function, and it, and it's from negative pi over two to pi over two, the the range. All right, so that's what we're trying to talk about here. So that's the range that they're talking about here, okay? So this is the range, I'm gonna box that, that's my answer for the largest interval of that form where it's differentiable, it's a differentiable function. So here on this range, it's a differentiable function, all right, in that range. Um, now, we're gonna write it in terms of x now. So remember, cosine of y, is equal to, why are we doing cosine of y? Because we're, we're trying to rewrite this. So what is cosine of y? Okay, well, let's let's do a triangle. If I, if I look at this triangle, cosine of y is equal to, so we're gonna, we're trying to figure out what cosine of y is equal to, right? But we, what is sine of y? What is sine of y? Well, we know that sine of y is equal to x, right? x over one. As a matter of fact, it's equal to x, but it's equal to x over one. Now, if I try to draw a right triangle from that, remember that sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So uh, if you remember your trig, right, your basic right triangle trig, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So then that means x has to be opposite of y, which that's opposite. And then h has to be hypotenuse, right? So it's one, which means that the adjacent from Pythagorean theorem, if I use the Pythagorean theorem, this is the adjacent side. Well, the adjacent side has to be the square root of uh, one minus x squared. Again, using the Pythagorean theorem, PT, Pythagorean theorem. And so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And so adjacent is square root of one minus x squared, right? So it's the square root of one minus x squared over one, which is just the square root of one minus x squared. So now we know what cosine of y is. So we can replace that here, okay? So uh, I'm gonna show you this uh, in a second, but there, I just wanted to show you the work there. So uh, we're gonna replace that with square root of one minus x squared. All right, so if you go to the um, next part here, cosine of y is the square root of one minus x squared, as, as I defined earlier. Plugging that into here gives you your derivative. So this is your derivative in terms of just x. All right, so hopefully that made sense. Uh, so here we go, so example seven. Um, the next couple of examples, we're going to try to find second derivatives, all right? So up until now, we've done only first derivatives implicitly, right? And then we tried to solve for them. Now we're going to do explicit, or no, I'm sorry, we're going to do implicit second derivatives, all right? Second order. All right, so here we go. So we're going to take the, we're going to implicitly differentiate on both sides with respect to x. Now we know that this is going to be zero, so that's nice. This is going to be 2x, and then this is going to be... 2y dy dx, right? So that's what we got. 2y dy dx, all that good stuff. Uh, and then now we note we're going to move the 2x over and then divide, divide by 2y. So we get um, negative 2x over 2y, which this cancels out. So we get negative x over y. So we got our first derivative. Now we're going to do the second derivative, all right? 
So we're going to take the second, the we're going to take the derivative of the first derivative, which turns into the second derivative, right? Okay. Um, so let's do the derivative of the first derivative. Now, the the first derivative is negative x over y. So this is a quotient rule. Okay. Let's uh, redefine the quotient rule real quick. Quotient rule, because you might have forgotten um, what that rule is. So, uh, all right. So it's um, low. So let me just write it out. So we got the derivative with respect to x of f over g. g f is high and g is low. Low d high minus high d low over low low. Okay. Um, usually I write this as a bracket. Okay, low d high minus high d low over low low. Okay, so um, that's how I remember it. But but yeah, so there's your uh, quotient rule. So we're gonna do the derivative, the 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 low which is y, d high which is a which is negative x. So the derivative of negative x is just negative one. All right, um, minus high which is negative x. This turns into a positive uh, times um, it's low d high, high d low. The derivative of y is just dy dx. So this is just going to be dy dx. All right, so there you go. And then over low low, so it's y squared. Okay. All right, so we got that. Um, so we got negative y. We're just going to clean this up a little bit. Now we got to replace dy dx. We're going to replace that with this, right? So we're going to put this, replace that. That's what we do over here. Okay. And then we're going to clean it up. So this is going to be x squared. And then we're going to combine this. So this is going to combine into negative y squared minus x squared over y. Okay, we got to combine it over a common denominator. Remember, this is a common denominator. Uh, this is a denominator one. So we need a common denominator y. So I need to multiply this by y top and bottom. All right, that's how I get that. And then, of course, we can bring the denominator down here so that you get y cubed. Okay, that's what we do. We bring the denominator down there so it turns into y cubed. All right, so that's how we got that. And then we're going to pull out a negative, pull out the negative, and that's what we get here. All right, so there's my second derivative. Now, I can actually, um, you know, I can replace y if I wanted to. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do in, in this step, I'm going to replace this because I know that this is equal to 36, right? So I'm going to replace that with 36. That's what I'm going to do in my final step. So replace that with 36, and we get this. This is the cleanest form that I guess you'll get for, for this example, the cleanest form. Negative 36 over y cubed. Very nice, clean form. All right, let's do one more like this. Um, find the second derivative. So take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. This is going to involve the chain rule. Okay, this is not chain rule. All right, the derivative of the right side is just 3x squared. Again, my uh, pen is sometimes it acts up here. Yeah, the derivative is just 3x squared. Okay. All right, so we got 3x squared on the right side. On the left side, it's a chain rule. The derivative of y squared is 2y and then dy dx. Uh, divide both sides by 2y. We get that as my derivative. So there's my derivative, my first derivative. Then we're going to take the second derivative, of course. Uh, so we're going to take the derivative of this is a chain uh, quotient rule. So this is going to be a quotient rule. So I'll write it over here. Uh, ho, or sorry, low d high minus high d low over low low. Okay, so then take the derivative of the high, the derivative of y, of y squared is um, 2y, right? But then it's 2y dy, or I'm sorry, yeah, let me, yeah. The derivative of 2y is just 2, but then dy dx, okay? So, and then the derivative of 3x squared is just 6x. So this is gonna turn to 6x. Um, this is gonna turn into um, two, and then dy dx. Okay, so we got 
and then two times three is six, so we got this, and then six times two is 12. All right, so we just multiplied after we took the derivative. Now we're gonna replace the dy dx. Okay, so we're, we're gonna start uh, replacing that. Before we do that, we, we notice that we can divide this by two, just to clean it up, make it simpler. And then we're gonna replace dy dx with that. 3x squared over 2y. And then of course, it's just cleaning things up. So 3x squared, 3x squared, that's 9x to the fourth. Again, we're gonna combine this so that uh, this is over an invisible one. So we need to multiply by 2y top and bottom so we can get a common denominator. So it's gonna turn into 12xy squared minus 9x to the fourth over a common denominator of 2y. And then the 2y goes down here and becomes 4y cubed, okay? We, we, we multiply them, all right? Um, so again, that's a lot of algebra involved there. So, but I, you know, I don't wanna take it for granted, but I also don't wanna explain every single detail, but explain just enough to, so that you understand. Um, so yeah, I brought that down. And then um, then, we can, then we can go ahead and replace the, you see, notice the y squared. The y squared, we can replace that. So every time you see y squared, because we know that y squared is x to the third, right? So we can replace that. This is the y squared that I replaced, which is x cubed, okay? Um, and then and then y cubed is the same thing as y squared y, right? And this is x to the third. Now, what's y? Well, y is the square root of x to the third, right? So I gotta take the square root. The square, so y squared is x to the third, but then if I raise both sides to the one half power, sorry, let me let me um, write this a little bit better here. Let's get y squared equals x to the third. I'm gonna solve for y by multiplying both sides of the exponent by one half. So now this cancels. So you get x to the three over two. In other words, it's just square root, is the square root of x cubed. Okay, is basically what it is. So I replace this with x to the three halves. So that's why I got this over here. And then um, x to the three halves and three. So what's three plus three halves? Well, three halves is one and a half, right? So three halves, so it's three plus one and a half. Well, three plus one and a half is four and a half. That's what I got here, four and a half, all right? So that's what I got that. Uh, and then x to the one half power is just square root, okay? So that's how I um, got that. Now um, here I get, here I get um, 12x to the fourth, and then 12x to the fourth minus 9x to the fourth is 3x to the fourth. And notice that these x to the fourths cancel, which is so nice. We get three over four square root of x, something that looks so much cleaner, right? By, be, by being able to substitute things. Now, do you have to substitute all this stuff? Not necessarily, but it just makes it very clean at the end. So, I mean, but it does come at the cost of, you know, getting a, doing a lot of algebra. Right, which you know, if you're at this point in the course, algebra, although it could be a pain, it really should be something that comes more naturally. Okay, and if it doesn't, that just means you need to, you know, it just takes a little bit more practice. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the video. I hope you found this useful and informative. As usual, I'll see you in the next one.